Good morning, everyone. It's great to be in the house of God today. I want to share a message with you from the book of Matthew today, chapter 10. We're going to read verses 17 through 33, and I hope that you'll join me in the reading today. Behold, I send you forth in the midst of wolves, as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before the governors and the kings for my sake, for the testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought of how or what you will speak, for it shall be given you in the safe same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. So you better be sure he's in there. And brother shall deliver brother up, brother to death, and the father child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in the city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above the master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye up on the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear them which is able to destroy the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven." Let us pray. Father, we thank you today for the reading of the Word of God. We ask you today, God, to multiply its blessing to our hearts and to our lives, that we might know the power and the might and the strength of our God. We ask your favor now, in Jesus' name, amen. The Trials of a Christian. Boy, did you, did you, did you ever think that becoming a Christian would be so difficult in hard times? Did you ever think that becoming a Christian would put an end to all the trials of life? Fact is, trials will come and trials will go. And only those who stand with God are going to be ready. When I fail, am I done? You might ask that question. When I fail, am I done? Is it over? Is that it? No, that's not it at all. There are a few failures in the Bible that uh, they failed God, but God restored and God replenished them. And he'll do the same for you. I, I, I think of King David who failed. His eyes got focused on his darling standing aloft from him. And his eyes could not be taken off of her nakedness. And he sinned before God. Hmm. 
He was the man after God's own heart. Maybe you're a man or a woman after God's own heart and something's come up in your life. But let me tell you, there are, there's hope when we think we fail. Peter failed. You remember the Apostle Peter, he, uh, he was the one that Jesus said, Simon Barjona, I will call you a rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. But Paul, Peter failed, didn't he? He failed Jesus. He gathered together with those that ran from the cross. He ran to those that were crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ. He ran to them and sitting in the midst of the campfire, one of the women noticed him and said, he's one of those that followed this Jesus. Peter denied him. I am not one of them. I am not one of them. I still, I am not one of them. But she knew that he was. And in Peter's heart, Peter knew that he was as well. And he began to weep because he knew the words of Jesus that said, Peter, you'll deny me three times. But did God cast out Peter because he failed him? No. No. He became one of the great preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ after the resurrection of Jesus. Preaching to 4,000 and they were saved. 5,000. Think about that. If God was going to get rid of someone, would it maybe have been the apostle? Would it maybe have been King David? Maybe perhaps it would have been Paul. Because Paul filled him as well. The one who said, Jesus said to him, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. But Paul said, I've called on you three times, God. I've called on you, and I've called on you, and I've called on you, God. But you've just turned your ear to me and not answered me. And again, Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. So if his grace is sufficient for Paul, is his grace not sufficient for you today? Can't you call on God in your time of need and say, Father, I need you. Father, I trust you. Father, help me through this trial. God, show me the way out or show me the way in, whichever it is that you would have for me to go, but show me the way. So don't be afraid today. Be on guard. Because there's things that are going to come that's far worse than you're seeing today. This old world is turning around. What once was a seemingly easy country to live in here in America has become so polluted and so hard today to live a good life in. Sin abounds. But can I remind you that the Bible says where sin doth abound, the grace of God doth much more abound. And we see all the riots on the streets. We see all the things going on in the world around us. Do we think that God has left us? That God has failed us? No, his word says that he would never do that. God said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Look with me to Acts chapter 5, verse 40, if you have your Bibles. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes the Pharisees made was then they let them go. Because nothing could stop the words of the apostles. They proclaimed Jesus Christ right in the midst of their synagogues, in their public square. Everywhere they went, they preached Jesus. They preached Jesus and the healing power and the delivering power and, and the hope that Jesus brings and only the hope that Jesus brings. We're not powerless. God said he would never leave you nor forsake you. You're not powerless. 
He said in times like that, his spirit would speak for you. So if you're afraid, if sometimes you, you confront things that you're not quite sure of and, and fear comes upon you, just remember that thought. His spirit will speak for you. When you don't know how to pray, God, I, don't, I just don't know how to ask you for this. I don't know how to receive what I need from you today, God. Look with me for a moment to Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. So when we're weak, the Spirit of God comes to help us. For we know not we, what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts of the saints according to the will of God knows your trial today, knows your need today, knows that you're hurting today. Maybe you're sick today. Maybe there's just someone in your life that is troubling, that you're afraid of. And you say, I need help, I need help, and I need it today. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. I called on a gentleman today. They were unplugging him from his life support. And I didn't tell him to get up and Get on the ball for God. Unplug those things that's plugging you up. Stand up and walk. I didn't say those things to him. I said, today Jesus wants to make you a part of his kingdom. That if you'll just ask him to come into your heart and into your life, he'll forgive you of your sins and you can find eternal life. But that's only through Jesus Christ. No one else in all the universe can give you eternal life. It's found in Him alone. And if you don't know how to pray, remember the Spirit of God is there for you. Don't turn Him away, but trust Him. I don't care what the world says, that we're from the Pentecostal religion and we're heretics and, and we preach untrue things. My friends, today I'll tell you this much. Everything that I preach is right here in this book. And if you doubt that, I challenge you to take it and read it and know that this is truth. This is yea and amen. And you can find help for whatever your need is in this book. Because we serve a God who would not leave us powerless who would not leave us without a word that could instruct us. This is our instruction manual. It was left here for us to follow God. Maybe that passage in Romans 8 spoke to you today. It seems to be talking about the times that's going on right now. If you look around and see all the things, as I said, it's not a very pretty world to live in today. When I was a little boy, I could get up in the morning in the summertime and I could go outside and run around and run down to the grocery store, or take my little 22 rifle and, and go out in the back and hunt rabbits or squirrels. And didn't have anything to worry about. Today, we have many things that confound us and trouble us. It's not the same world that I grew up in. Standing firm is the byproduct of a devoted life to God. If you're devoted, you'll stand. The Bible says, stand therefore. And when you've done all to stand, stand therefore. Don't give up. Don't retreat. Plod on, straight toward the cross of Jesus Christ. The student and his teacher. 
in my 45 years of ministry, I've had many students. Many who have sat under this ministry and many who have gone on to be great men and women of God. And some who have failed. Some who have said, I think I'm a better teacher than you are. I, I think I'm a better preacher than you are. I think people will listen to me more than they'll listen to you, Pastor. So I'm going to cut loose and just go do my own thing. And I say to them, I hope you're blessed by God. But here's a thought. The student who tries to take over is the one who fails. It's not about you, student. It's about your heart. It's about your mindset. It's about Jesus and not about you. If he wants you somewhere, he'll put you there. Trust him. Walk with him. Belong to him. The one who truly serves his teacher is the one the master uses. So don't worry about who gets the credit, because the credit all belongs to God. If you start taking the credit, your ministry will fail. If you start saying, there's no preacher like this preacher, God will show you that you're no preacher at all. His word is true. His word is yea and amen. And every line and every jot and every tittle, he examines as it comes forth from your heart, from your life, from your mouth, from your ministry, whatever you're using it for. Don't worry. Give all the credit to God and keep going. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body. You don't have to fear them. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. And that they may have it more abundantly. Is that what you're looking for? An abundant life? I love it when I see young people succeed in life. When they reach the goal that they're looking for. And when they, when they attain that goal, they say things like, hey, there's more that I can reach for. There's more that I can gain. There's more that I can do. In your walk with God, there is always more to do. When you think you're settled and when you've done enough, that's when you need to get busy. Because God hasn't come back yet. And there's a world out there that is obviously dying and going to hell. And it's our responsibility as men and women of God, not just as preachers of God, not just as prophets of God, or apostles of God. It's to every one of us who claims Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have a goal. We have a call. We can't turn our back and walk away. We have to walk face first into the battle and allow it to mold us and make us everything that God wants us to be. If you cower and run, and you deny Jesus Christ, I tell you today, the Bible says that He'll deny you when you stand before Him at Judgment Day. I don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to go to hell. Oh, oh there's that word, <laughs> that little four-letter word that Everybody says, there is no hell. You Pentecostals preach that for fear. I don't preach it for fear. Because I found peace in knowing that there's a hell. Because I can shun hell and receive heaven. Or I can shun heaven and receive hell. The choice is mine and the choice is yours. So what will it be today? You have nowhere else to turn. You have nobody else to go to. 
Go to that statue made of stone. Kneel down before it. See if he answers you. See if there's anything amazing that comes out of that statue. I'll tell you today, nothing will come. I'm reminded of Elijah as he met with the prophets of Baal. And, and they jotted around the sacrifice and they yelled and they screamed. They cut themselves, they beat themselves. And 400 of them gathered and they tried to raise an answer from their God and nothing happened. Elijah simply said, my God, let's just put it this way. Show yourself, God, to these unsaved people. Show yourself, God, to these people who don't believe you're real. He had instructed them to pour water over all of the sacrifice. And then dig a hole around the bottom of the sacrifice and fill it with water. And instantly, when he called on the name of God, the sacrifice was consumed, the water was dried up, and the God of Elijah was proclaimed king. God knows everything there is to know about you. Everything there is to know about you. And his grace is sufficient for you today. For all of your needs. Are you sick? Jesus said, call on the elders of the church and let them anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith and you shall be healed. Jesus said to the little woman with the issue of blood, who touched me? She snuck in through the crowd and touched just the hem of his garment. And immediately, Jesus said to his disciples, who touched me? And here was their response. Master, you're in the midst of a throng of people and you ask, who touched me? Because Jesus knows every time you reach out to touch him, he knows everything you need. He felt her touch. And immediately, the issue of blood that she had spent all of her money and all of her life with no success, that issue of blood was dried up and she was made perfectly whole in an instant. God knows everything that goes on in your life, in your family's life. He knows every hair on your head. How personal is that? You can't escape him at all. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that every hair on your head is numbered with a number. Listen to what it says in Luke chapter 12, verse 7. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. And remember his word said that if one sparrow falls to the ground, he sees them. If you're wallowing in the molly grubs today, in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your doubt about a God of creation whom you deny, let me tell you today, he'll call on you if you'll answer him. See, the real test, the real test of value is how well something holds up under the wear and tear of everyday life. So how's your everyday life been? Some of you out there would say, well, I've felt like ending it all for quite a few times. I feel like just running away, like Elijah ran away and he went down by the brook and asked God to take his life. See, I feel like that sometimes. But remember, God didn't take Elijah's life. Instead of taking Elijah's life, God called for the ravens 
to bring him meat and the water brook was there for his sustenance. He knows you. But here's the important part. He loves you. He knows you and he loves you even though you're not serving him today. Even though you would say, I don't know God. I don't care about God. You will one day care about God. Because the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you will not escape that. You can't escape that. Because the creator of the universe spoke it. And it's so. So, in closing today, I would just ask, how you doing? How you doing? Do you need Jesus today? You can call on Him real easily. Just repeat this prayer with me today. Father God, I call on you today. I ask you to reveal yourself to me that I would know you. That I would know that you're real and that you're not a myth and that you're everything that I need. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. That I'll not sin again for the rest of my life. And if I do, your word says that I have an advocate with the Father that will forgive me. But God, for today, I need to know that you're real. I need to know that you're there. I need to know that you care. So forgive me today, I pray. I thank you now for receiving me into your kingdom as a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you prayed that prayer today, my friend, you're on the right track. God heard that prayer. And you can trust his word. And he will always be there. I thank you today for listening to this message. But I thank you more for applying this message to your life. Now may God bless you as we go. May his grace and his love be upon you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name.